You know what Godo is? He's not picking up any of my calls. No, I haven't heard from him. Trouble in paradise, Romeo? Well, you wouldn't possibly understand. Stop talking! I call the SEC tonight. Or we can handle it another way. When I call, you get on the phone. When I have questions, you answer them. And the second I want my money back, you give it to me. Yeah, that's her. That's the bitch that tried to kill me. What's up, Power fans and YouTube? It's your boy Nino, and I'm back with another Power video. Now, in this video, I'll be talking about Tariq and RSJ blackmailing Lucas, Goro's disappearance, Efe's arrest, and Kane's jealousy with Tariq, and other happenings in episode 8. And of course, if you are new to my channel, you're welcome. Kindly hit the subscribe button, like, share, most importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section. If you have already subscribed, Thanks for the support. Now let's get straight into the topics. In one of my previous videos, I stated that my fear is Diana is going to think Tariq set her up with the lockers at the rooftop. And like I said before, we all know Tariq was genuinely helping Diana with those lockers. Now the best way Tariq can convince Diana on his innocence about the cameras at the rooftop is to blame it on Ify. Why? Because Ify was not arrested based on that and if anything, she is rather arrested for an attempted murder of Lauren. If Tariq is smart, you use this as a reason if he wanted Diana gone. Tariq can convince Diana that if he got jealous after seeing them back together and decided to help the feds arrest her for dealing. Besides, if he even threatened Diana that if she doesn't work with her, then her cover will be blown. Shit. And even so, they know it's you. You about to get blown up unless you team up with me. You for real? Then Tariq can add to the fact that she tried killing Lauren and it's like, Efe is so damaged that she will do anything to keep people he loves away from him. This is a possible way I think Tariq can convince Diana that he had no idea how cameras got up there and the fact that he had nothing to do with it. Moving forward, I believe a lot of things are going to hang around Efe's neck because of some of the selfish choices she's making and by also sleeping with Kane. And Tariq can justify himself in so many ways that Efe wants to do anything to destroy him. Now, Kane is back to his jealousy on Tariq because of the fact that Monet is making him a priority again. By making moves without involving him just like she used to do when she was in charge back then when Lorenzo was inside. In the new trailer, we see Kane telling Ife to flip on Tariq because he's the one they want. Now, Kane doesn't even know that the reason Ife is where she is is because of him in the first place. He was the one they got on wire with Braden. He was the one who sneaked Detective Ramirez's badge in Tariq's locker. Now, what Kane doesn't know is that Ife made her decision to kill Lauren and Tariq has her on tape confessing to it. Now, someone would think Ife will get out of this very easily, but that recording is the only bargaining chip for Tariq. Not forgetting that Ife's words against Lauren will come to play and there is no evidence that she attempted to kill her. Even if Braden testifies, it might not stick because he can also end up becoming an accomplice to what Ife did since he was the one who handed Lauren over to Ife. What will stick permanently is the recording Terry got on Ife confessing. Now, usually, Power uses major deaths or major imprisonment to end a season finale, but since Sark's death came too early, which I consider to be a major death in Power Universe, I strongly believe that someone is going to jail. Now, my suspicion will be Kane or Monet. As for Ife, only God will save her from going down for this. Now, why did I say Kane? There are a lot of things he got away with and with his move on Ife, he can be exposed soon. Now, if you remember, Monet warned Tariq never to kill Kane or else she'll come after him and no matter what, Kane is still her son. This is the reason Tariq will not make any move to kill Kane. But what Terry can potentially do to Kane if worse comes to worse is for him to set him up to end up in jail just like he tried doing to him Tariq with Ramirez's badge. Kane tried so many times to put Tariq away and never succeeded by framing him for Ramirez's death and always antagonizing him. Now let's not forget Tariq says he's tired of always being defensive and that he's now going to offensive mode. This will therefore make Tariq potentially put Kane behind bars. Monet will not blame Tariq if her son ends up in prison as much as she will blame him if he ends up dead. Now if Kane ends up in prison, the conflict will be easily built between him and Tariq moving forward. We'll also see how Kane will handle himself behind bars and so forth. I believe Kane in jail will give more stories to the writers. Now, if Kane doesn't end up behind bars, Monet might do so. I'm predicting that this Godo issue that is pending and the stolen file from Whitman, Monet might find herself getting caught and Diana will be the first 
to do the discovery. And don't forget the picture evidence of that file is still on Sack's phone. And where he was shot, there is no way Davis will assess the body and take his phone before they come for the body. Now, if Blanca gets hold of Sack's phone, I think they will find something that can implicate Monet and Davis. You know, she was close to getting her CI's phone at first until Drew and Godo got there first. So I think the writers will give her the chance to have Sack's phone this time. Now, what I feel might happen is that the moment Monet's children find out her involvement in their father's death, the feds are going to be knocking on their door to arrest her for the Whitman murder or something. Then none of the children can put bullets in her if they wanted to. Then our Monet will get to leave another season behind bars. Now, if my guess is right, Monet has only one person to trust and work with from jail and that is Tariq. None of her children will go to her in jail to sympathize with her. Even if they visit, they are only going to vent their anger on her and tell her to rot in hell. I can see Diana doing that to Monet behind those prison glasses. Now, Tariq has always been the son that Monet wanted in her children, especially Kane. A son that would choose his mother any day even if she kills his father for any reason. Tariq is the kind of support system Monet wanted in her sons. That is why she doesn't hesitate to work with him at the blind side of her own kids. So if Monet is in jail, only Tariq can be her ally and the person she can depend on for a possible assistance to her freedom. There will be interesting stories to tell around Monet as well if she ends up behind bars. One thing for sure is that some way, somehow, they will find out Monet was involved in Lorenzo's death, leading to Drew killing Goro, and I believe Evelyn will play a major role in bringing that truth to light. Now let's move to Goro. Goro is missing to the family and we all know what happened to him. After Monet called them for a meeting to halt operations, Evelyn approached Drew concerning Goro's whereabouts. Drew at this point is moving with too many emotions, so he told them that he doesn't know his whereabouts and that they were both fine. Now, after the drama between Drew and Everett at the bar, this lady here, I believe, recorded them and his outburst went viral till Goro's brother saw it. Now he's gone. And, 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 and I, I got nothing. This shit has gone viral. He told us everything was good. And still nothing from Goro. From Drew's statement, Goro is gone. And the question is, gone where? Evelyn is going to know that something happened to her son if he goes missing after a few days. This to them might not be a typical behavior of him unless something bad happened to him. We will all agree that Drew was speaking under the influence of alcohol and at that moment, he had no control over what he was saying. Now we might be seeing the Casillos coming after especially Drew for answers. And this video will possibly contradict everything Drew might say now that he's sober. Well, we still don't know what they did with his body. But if what I'm thinking is what they did to Goro, like they did to his father, then his body will never be found. This again will give Evelyn a clue that the Taharas killed her son just like her husband. Because she never saw his body, he just disappeared like a ghost. So if the same thing is done to Goro, Evelyn will conclusively know that they killed her son too. And her conviction will be based on what Monet came to tell her about Lorenzo after she initially denied her knowledge about what happened to Frank. Now let me know what you also think in the comment section about the Goros and everything I stated earlier with Kane's jealousy over Tariq. Now let's not forget that Kane is the only one among the children who still knows that Lorenzo killed Zeke. And personally, I have a feeling Diana will flip on Monet if she finds out that Monet put heat on their father over what seems to be a mistake identity. Now let's move on to RSJ and the Westerns. RSJ was right about the fact that he was calm because of Tariq. Had it not been that Tariq convinced him using the QCP project, he wouldn't have invested his money there. I worked my ass off to get here by doing things the right way. I was walking away from the Westerns before your shady ass pulled me back in. So let me be absolutely clear. I'm fucked, Tariq, because of you. Now, like I already explained in my earlier video about how the Ponzi scheme works, there is no way the Westerns can pay RSG, Tariq, and the Tahades their monies without having a new richer investor who will bring their monies to them. So until Lucas gets new investors on board, RSJ, Monet, and Tariq won't have a dime. Now, RSJ initially threatened to report the situation 
to SEC. And if some of you are wondering what SEC is or who is SEC, let me quickly highlight that to you. SEC means the Security and Exchange Commission. Now, SEC is the U.S. government agency in charge of the nation's securities industry. It monitors transactions as well as the activities of financial professionals. Its mission is to promote fairness, integrity, and transparency, prevent fraud and other deceptive acts just like the Western Ponzi scheme, and ensure orderly and efficient markets. Now, one of their key missions is to protect investors and also check public companies' financial disclosures and statements. They oversee registered market players such as investment advisors, broker dealers, and transfer agents. Now, should RSJ report Westings about dealing in Ponzi scheme to say, not only would they be arrested, but every asset they have acquired during the scheme will be sold or frozen. Investors will mount pressure on the government and the financial institution to get them their investments. They will see the public protest and the entire government will come under scrutiny for granting the Westerns license to operate without doing due diligence. Other investment companies will become questionable as the public will not be sure on which is legit and which is a Ponzi scheme. This is the summary of the reason why Tariq insists RSJ shouldn't blow the whistle on them until they get their monies. Now, Tariq couldn't come to terms in telling Monet about the Ponzi scheme because Monet might not understand this in an intellectual way and might think making threats or killing Lucas will get her her money back. So he has to make sure Monet doesn't know about this. But they will have to figure a way out to pay Monet back. So I have a feeling among the three of them, Monet might be paid first to avoid any issues from her. Now at this point, Lucas is vital and very fragile and needs to be protected since this whole idea of Ponzi scheme came from him. It also means that he's the only one in the Westerns who can make things work moving forward. So so if anyone kills Lucas now, then it's a done deal for both the Westings and every investor. So let me know what you also think as well in the comment section. Now, still on Lucas, I have a feeling Lucas is going to try something stupid on RSJ. Now, we all know RSJ has been keen on his reputation and how he doesn't want any debt on his success story. But here is the case he found himself in the middle of a Ponzi scheme as an investor. It will be different if he doesn't know anything about it. But now that he's aware, his silence on it will go a long way to dent his reputation as a corrupt person who will do anything for money and lucas can potentially rob him in as an accomplice to the aponzi scheme and that as an investor he knew about the fact that western holdings was a ponzi scheme all this while it was a good thing rsd threatened lucas to expose him to sex but his silence will also implicate him should he expose them after getting his money back so let me know what you also think in the comment section about this so far if you like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button Turn on your notification bell to get notified on my next videos. Like, share, most importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Catch you in my next video. It's your boy Nino. Thanks for watching.